Hello, okay, so I just thought I'd show this light wrappy thingy me jiggy. So um I'll talk you through the sort of the way the shader stuff set up in a second, but I just wanted to show you what, what I'm currently looking at. Um so it's basically doing uh an alpha blur, so I, I've set it up so I can just quickly um show I've generated a sort of blurred uh, alpha mask in the shader and we can change the intensity of that and the, the offset by changing the blur kernel size. So that's essentially um, sampling the alpha image inside the, the alpha of this texture, um, blurring it and then using that with a masked version of itself to sort of get the fall off edge. Um, the intensity is a bit too much there. And then that alpha is being used as the, the actual, um, the alpha value to use for a blurred version. So if we up the intensity, it's blurring this background texture as well and applying the blurred version where this alpha is um so it kind of works i think the the two pass blur sort of method is probably better but i figured i'd have a um quick look at this one uh so if you if you take it to extremes obviously it looks a bit wonky but essentially you can see that it's uh taking the kind of background lighting values at least um again you know you can tweak the how much it's wrapping and stuff like that so it does at least i mean i was just kind of thinking about what, whether that would work as a sort of way of doing it by sampling the, the alpha channel so just to talk you through what's happening um we've got the media plate with an alpha channel in it so it's actually got alpha already. You would probably do this in a Kia somewhere before that. Um, but I'm just using an image with an alpha, so I have to mess around with Kias and my machine doesn't explode trying to do render to textures and stuff. And so what it's doing is it's doing what I call alpha accumulate, which is basically just a, a blur. Um, and this is what <laughs> Epic use all over the place for a lot of their um, shaders. And all it is, uh, I'll just do the material instance. It's HLSL shader inside a custom node. Uh, it's being previewed right now. Um, and what that's doing is it takes a, a blur kernel, takes the texture coordinates in, does a blur on the actual alpha of this image. And then um, I do a multiply with the alpha again so that I can essentially you only blur it only matters where i blur inside the alpha mask of this thing so you don't get out blurs outside of the character and then i invert it with one minus i then change the intensity of that wrap so you can just sort of make it a bit brighter if you're interested i raise it through a power and exponential just to give it a bit of a boost that's probably not useful I then use an over node, which is essentially doing the results of that image with that alpha mask over the top of a blurred background. And again, the blur is just a simple HLSL blur shader. Um, HLSL code is being injected into the overall HLSL for this. So if you, if you look at it, this, if you look here, um, this output is actually generating a whole bunch of a HLSL code um, for the material. And all these nodes do is inject raw HLSL so that the HLSL compiler can output it. So you can kind of, you can do some funky things like create globals and stuff in this if you want to. Um, so yeah, uh, let's just stop previewing that one. Um, so I'm, I made this value, this blend, alpha output lerp thing just to see i could so i could test the, the visible stuff of this in my material instance without having to quick 
you know, recompile this shader every time. Um, so next steps are, well, I can do a composite, uh, you know, a composite version of this, which I probably will do just, just for giggles. Um, but this one, it, it's not as going to be as performant because it is doing quite a lot of samples. Um, so what I'll do is I'll do a, a multi-pass render to texture version of it that will actually do the blurring as a, a two-pass separable blur and then composite that back together into a blueprint. Um, so it'll probably end up being a blueprint with two plates, one, you know, like two, basically two planes, um, one slightly in front of the other, and then do a scene capture kind of thing from the first plate into the second and that kind of stuff. So there's still a, a bit of playing to have, so I'll hopefully get that done tomorrow uh, while I'm sat at work. Uh, when I say sat at work, I mean sat next to the phone waiting for somebody to call who won't. So, yeah. And there you go. That's uh, that's it kind of working. Um, it does need a fair bit of playing with to get decent values. I did play with... Um, moving it so that you can actually sort of change where the character's position is, is in terms of sampling from the background and stuff. You know, you can offset the, the UV coordinates just to show you that. It's just a simple scale and bias, which I shoved over here somewhere. It's just a simple scale and bias texture coordinate thing, but I ended up not using it in the end because the, the actual media images are both 1920 by 1080. Um, but if you didn't have the same thing, you could kind of shift the UV coordinates of just this object around when you're sampling the background if you wanted to. Uh, so there you go. That's that's it working. Um, not sure if that's how it's supposed to be done. I mean, there's definitely some... So there's, there's visual artifacts at the bottom here, but that's easy enough to just sample from the upper hemisphere rather than sampling the lower one. So that one's an easy fix. Um, technically, you could kind of fix it by only sampling left and right of the alpha um, rather than sap, because currently it does a, a sort of circular disk sample around each pixel. Um, and obviously, the pixel costs way too hard. So what I'll probably do is I'll do a down sampling version of it, so it actually samples down to a smaller, like, quarter size or half size render to texture and then does an up sample later once it's done the blur. So that kind of thing's usually a bit of a time saving. Um, but technically it's the same kind of deal really. It's just shade of pass throughs and stuff. Uh, like I said, I'll probably do a composite version of it just to see how that ends up looking. Um, it looks, I mean, it, if you look at the sort of composite passes and stuff, their blurs are exactly, so this is epics. Let's just move that off to a different monitor. This is epics version of it, right? It's literally the same bloody code that I'm using. So, you know, their chroma key and all that sort of half of their shaders use this HLSL injection thing because you can't do um, for loops inside a material. So you need that to be able to do that, you know, the HLSL for loop kind of thing. So there you go. Um, bit of progress, bit of fun. And I'll uh, upload this video now and show you.